Hey, Mount Perrin, this is Rafael Perrin. And my name is Anna Farley. And we just wanted to come to you today as a black male and a white female to just talk about the craziness and chaos that's going on in America today. And so we should take a step back, dive into the word and ask ourselves why God in these trying times. So we wanna start by looking at compassion because no matter what skin color you have, um, I know as Christians, we all mourn for what happened to George Floyd. Um, Romans 12, 15 says, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. And so even though my skin color is white, I still mourn for my black classmates and black members of this society. Um, compassion, the definition, is a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, but accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate that suffering. And I know that I have um, that desire. I want to help so bad. Um, and so I know a lot of Christians are probably thinking, what can we do? Um, so we want to look at Jesus. Jesus was fueled by compassion. Um, that's why he did what he did. Matthew 9, 36 says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then you move on over to Matthew 14, 14. And it says, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Um, and so how as believers, like what can we do with this compassion that um, the Holy Spirit has given us? So our approach, our approach must be to use these two biblical principles, justice and reconciliation. The 11th grade Bible teacher, Mr. Robertson, spoke to us and he said that unfortunately, many people want to just skip justice and move directly to reconciliation. The belief that this is possible is a dangerous fallacy and goes against everything that we know about our just God. We are only able to be reconciled to God because the punishment for our sin was poured out on Jesus Christ at the cross. Every single sin had to be paid for. This is what is called retributive justice. Retributive justice is necessary because many people feel that nothing will ever change. They feel as though people will be able to continue to commit atrocities without any significant punishment. People need to be able to believe that true justice will be served on their behalf in every way. After retributive justice is restorative justice. The harm must be repaired. So most of us want to just skip to reconciliation. But as Christians, we crave peace and unity, but that cannot happen without recognizing our wrongdoings first. The just punishment for all sin is death, but our gracious savior died on the cross and took the place of death so that we can live. So what does this justice look like? Justice is recognizing that we are wrong and we need God to fix our situation for us. The crime committed to George Floyd was one of many wrong situations, but in Matthew 22, 34, Jesus says, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And after justice... That's the first biblical principle. We look at reconciliation and basically that's a big word, but when you get down to it, it's us being unified as one body of Christ. So we move on to second Corinthians five, 13 through 21. And this is a whole chapter on um, reconciliation. So let me get to it. And it says, if we are out of our minds, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to, us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 
that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he was committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And so we look at and see that because Christ saved us from our wrongdoings, we can now live in him. Mount Perrin, the time is now to bring justice and reconcile in Jesus' name. Jesus came down to save all skin colors because he was fueled by compassion, and God wants us to be unified in sharing his love. Mount Perrin Christian School has no tolerance for injustices based on race, ethnicity, color, or gender. We are a community who is brought together by the love of Jesus Christ. So let's stand together on the foundation of his word to back us up. I know our mission statement includes love others in it. So I hope and pray that each student that walks on campus lives by that, loving others no matter what skin color. We also look at what MLK said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. I really think us Christians, that's our job to be the light in this dark world. Like the mayor said, chaos is not gonna fix anything. So a united force in Christ will bring justice and peace. God's our foundation. When storms come, we hold steadfast in him, knowing he will guide us. As leaders of the high school, we hope that each of you watch what's going on in the world right now and become a light to the darkness. Like Dr. Wien said, today friends, I implore you to speak up, to speak out, and to come together around what we, MPC School, can and will do about justice, about equality, and about the sanctity of all life. Jesus gave his life so that we may live and so we may help others recognize the value of all life. And I know a lot of people are thinking, well, my one voice has no like meaning, like, or my skin color is white, like how can I help? Well, this issue will begin to change in the hearts of each person. And then it'll be a community change that'll then change America. So your one voice does matter and it will make changes. I just want you to imagine what our world would look at without racism. To be an activist, all you need is a vision. So pray for that vision from Jesus Christ. Pray for justice and ask for peace. Also, and take a step back, evaluate how you treat others and what you think in your own heart about what Jesus would do. Mount Perrin students, it starts with us. Our generation is going to change racism. So it's our turn to fight the sins of the world. Stand up for your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's our turn to change what's going on. So stand up and make the difference you want to see. Today is a day that we stop looking at each other based on skin color, gender, ethnicity. And today is the day we start striving for greatness and for the love of Jesus Christ. Thank y'all so much. Thank you.